What's up, YouTube? Uh, we're starting like a minute or two early because I'm going to try to stream off of a couple of different platforms here. So sit tight. I will get to you soon. Twenty one, twenty twenty. moving or my standing desk down lower for the Instagram camera. One more stream to get on. Hold tight if you're watching via YouTube or Facebook as we get this going on Instagram as well. One of the last couple of times we'll be doing live on everything and I'll tell you why momentarily. We good there, we good here on That's better. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Didn't double check uh, if the all three cameras here are on us. Hello and welcome to the live workout on Thursday, the 21st of May. I'm Coach Andrew head trainer and co-owner of Foundation CrossFit. We're going to go through a fun little ditty today. Maybe we'll go 10 minutes. So I was going to have a whiteboard out and all that good stuff. We're just going to say 10 to keep it nice and easy. 10-minute um, AMRAP. We're going to do 10 sumo deadlift high pulls. And what do I have written down here? 10 sumo deadlift high pulls, 10 goblet squats for 10 minutes. Every minute on the minute, we're going to do 10 left and right mountain climbers. So we're going to cover all this stuff today. Um, I am in my bedroom, and I have a ton of equipment behind me. So hopefully you've got something very similar to that. I didn't mention this earlier if you happen to see the preview post on social, but a band also works today. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do everything here which secretly I think this is this is always going to be the hardest, most difficult option, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Otherwise, I've got uh, kettlebells. We'll pull out uh, red right now. And then I've got a reusable bag here. This is a just, you know, plain reusable shopping bag. Uh, and I put a bunch of snacks in there and some water bottles. So it weighs something now. This could also work for the workout today if you don't have a band or a kettlebell. And then obviously a backpack of some sort also works uh, for what we're doing. If you luck out with a kettlebell or a dumbbell or a barbell or a sandbag, hell, even... I didn't pull this out earlier. A bumper plate of some sort, right? So I use this as a thumbnail for the uh, YouTube feed. Um, but this also works in a pinch. Then, you know, I can have things like a bucket here. This this is a heavy-duty bucket, so it actually weighs something on its own, and I can still do the workout with something like this. So I'll, I'll demonstrate what we're looking for with all that, but we're going to start off with 
as per usual, some joint prep because we're if we're working out, we need to make sure everything feels okay. So I just want you to copy me. Again, our magic number is going to be 10. So if you want to start moving on your own at your own pace, uh, you can do so, counting to 10 for everything here. I have my windows closed currently. I have my windows closed currently. It's going to get warm in here. I can already feel it, and I'm barely moving. So I'm probably going to pop this open because I can see some sun breaks. And then obviously in the middle of the workout, it's going to get hot. So just keep that in mind as I take a bunch of these breaks. Anyways, prep. I need pull. As you can see, what we're doing today doesn't really require shoes, although obviously if you're outside, protect your feet. If you're inside, here's a little benefit. Training barefoot allows you to kind of see and feel your balance. I had a conversation with some athletes last night during our stretch class on Zoom, and we we're talking about that. You're paying attention to it a little bit more because you can. All right, and then we're going to do a quad pull. So you can grab same side or opposite side. It's really up to you. But my goal is to pull my knee back, keep my chest upright, feel that stretch for a moment before you switch sides. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're going to do some toe touches. So I put all the weight in my back leg, I bend that knee, I lock the other leg out, I put the heel down, I reach for that toe. Stand up, switch sides, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, figure four. I'm gonna grab the arch of my foot. I'm gonna pull my heel up towards my belly button and try to stand tall. If I change angles, you can see you're getting that balance that I'm looking for. Can your ears stack on your shoulders, stack on your rib cage, stack on your hips, stack on your foot? Boom! If you're having a hard time and this is all you can do, that's all you can do. I'm gonna redo this side because that doesn't count as a rep for me. Okay, lunges. So I'm stepping on my mat. My right foot is biased towards the right side. My left foot is biased towards the left, hands on the hips. Step forward, hey look, I'm still on that side. And I'm facing forward. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good morning, we're gonna try to wake up that posterior soft knees. My feet are parallel to each other, I'm rooted, and try to corkscrew my feet out, hands behind my head. Big chest, eyes forward, bend down until you feel a stretch. Stand up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, cool, we're gonna stretch out our hips a little bit. So I'm gonna take a knee on the ground. We're gonna do a Samson stretch. So actually I'll demo this way first. Get better contrast over here than over here. As I can see in the one camera that's facing me, YouTube, uh, hit the bottom of your lunge. So I get that stack, shoulders, rib cage, hip, knee that's touching the ground. I'm gonna tuck my toe in the back just for a little bit more control here. And the goal is just to pulse forward. Notice I've stepped forward enough that I'm not in a weird position like this. I want to get my foot out in front and I want to stay upright so that when I move forward, if I'm keeping my abs tight as well, I'm going to feel some sort of stretch in this area. Could be the hip flexor, could be part of the adductor, could be part of the quad. And we're just going to bounce in about 10 times. And then we're going to switch. I'm going to drop that knee, pick this one up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go ahead and stand up. We're going to try ten air squats. So shoulder width apart, 
weights towards the heels, but the ball of my foot and my big toe are heavy as well. Corkscrew your feet as you squat. Trying to break parallel, hip is lower than the top of the knee. Stand up completely, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shake it out. All right. A couple of things that we're just going to add to the upper body since we haven't really moved it around so much that I'm going to try to hug myself and get my the back of my hands to smack each other. Hug, smack, hug, smack, hug, smack. And I'm going to do the same thing, but for the shoulder. So I'm going to try to get my arms parallel to the ground here. And I'm going to reach behind my head. Now I'm going to put my arms out in a T. My goal here is to break in the elbows and lock my arms out. And that makes circles with my elbows. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, Ooh, I got some crack there. Now I'm going to put my arms in. I'm going to do the same thing, but alternating, and that's going to look like I'm hitting a speed bag. Switch directions. Interlace your fingers. Reach up behind you. Press your hips forward as much as you can. We'll only do five of these. Think of this as an ab exercise. Because we're not trying to dump the stress in the back. We're trying to squeeze the glutes forward and challenge the abs here. Very similar to an ab wheel if you've ever done that stuff. It's not about how far can you reach. It's how well can you maintain the tension in the correct system as you stress that joint by or stress that system by trying to add leverage to it? Okay, enough of that nerding out. We have a bunch of equipment today. I'm ready to start moving. I don't know about you. Um, 10 minutes, like I said before, we're going to go 10 sumo deadlift high pulls, 10 goblet squats for 10 minutes with every minute on the minute. We have to do 10 mountain climbers. So we'll start off with the mountain climber. I'm gonna have my hands off of the mat here and I'm in a plank position. So this is also the top of the push-up if you're used to that. Shoulder is directly over the wrist and you can tell because I'm super solid and I can hold this even if I take my hand off of the ground. From here, the goal is for today's purposes, can I get the knee in contact with the elbow or the tricep, come back into the plank position, switch sides. Note a couple of things. Number one, a plank position means I have a line running from my ear all the way down to my heels. We're not looking for this, where a lot of people pike their hips up into the air. <sighs> also, if I face the cameras, when I do this, watch my shoulders. They hide my hips the entire time. If I do that incorrectly, there's a lot of wiggle and wobble in the torso. Our goal is to keep this locked out like a beam. Cool? So that's what we're going to look for in the mountain climber today. There is the other version that I like challenging people to the majority of the time, which is the stretch version. If my hands are off of the mat, my foot would get off of the mat. That's how far forward I am. This requires not only the strengthen that hip flexor, but the mobility and the flexibility to get this deep into that stretch. So on and so forth. But today, again, I'm just looking for knee in contact with the elbow. One, two, three. Oh yeah. And then finally, I called it a left and right mountain climber. I know it's always weird to people because you might count it every rep that you do counts as one. Some of you only count when one side touches. A left and right means that you have to do left and right for one rep. So both legs have to move. I'm only going to count when my right knee 
makes contact with my elbow. One, two, three. A quick note, it's harder for me to hold this position with my foot off of the ground. I can, if I need help, put my the ball of my foot on the ground to make contact. And if that's too difficult or that's too great of a demand on the hips, just move your feet. It's cool here because I have this mat almost as like a, a way to check zones. I want, if possible, to, for my foot to get all the way out there. But if it's too difficult, you can just put your foot on the mat. That works too. Boom, 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 boom. But you're counting the same every time your right foot makes contact. Is one rep. All right. What's next? Um, the weighted movements today. Again, it doesn't matter what you have available. It matters that you're doing the movement and you're challenging your body. In the CrossFit world, in our world at FCF, we are always looking to challenge compound movements, which just means we're using the entirety of the body as much as we can in more of like movement patterns rather than like muscle groups. That's really important to us uh, because our goals are more in the functional realm. We're not necessarily out there trying to look good primarily. I always say that because I know many of you do want to look good, but primarily look good. Form follows function. The more athletic you become, the more athletic you look. You think of your favorite athlete. They probably have nice frames, but it's because they use everything. If you're in the gym and only working on your arms, maybe you got great looking arms, but your posture looks terrible, your neck looks weird, and you got a flat ass. Try to make contact, eye contact with everybody. Because that might be you, right? We're going to challenge you to utilize that ass and everything else whenever we can. So these two movements, great for the back side of the body. That's what we're going to try. Um, what should I start with? We'll start with the equipment if you don't really have equipment. So I'll start with the bags first, and then we'll move our way over to proper weights like the... Uh, kettlebell today. So number one, what does a sumo deadlift high pull look like? I'm going to start with my grocery bag full of groceries. Shout out to Barry and the crew over at Broadcast Coffee Roasters. I'm going to straddle my feet out as much as I can. So that's why we call it a sumo deadlift. My feet are wider than my own shoulders. I'm going to bend uh, my hips and my knees until the weight makes contact with the ground. Now I'm short enough and this bag is long enough that I can touch the ground fairly soon. I can challenge myself by grabbing more where the handles meet the bag. And now I'm really forced to bend down a little bit more. As my knees bend, I really want to drive those knees out and lift that chest high. So from the side, it looks like this. My shoulder is higher than my hip. My hip is higher than my knees. My feet are planted into the ground. My goal here is to lock these joints out. And there we have a sumo deadlift, the first half of this movement. Full lockout of the knee and the hip. I'm tucking my butt as much as I can. So now that I'm squeezing it, I know that I'm using it. As I go down, with whatever object I utilize today, my goal is to push it back between my legs as much as I can. That's gonna help us engage a lot of the back a lot more, and that's what we want. This, letting the bag get out in front of me, will stress the back, and you can see that I'm rounding a little bit more. The more leverage I add that way. So pull it back so you can keep it tight. Focus on the hamstrings and the glutes here. Your back is working, but it's hold. It's just holding the position. My back has to work a lot if I'm reaching out. So keep that in mind. So there's the sumo deadlift, but there's a second part, the high pull. A sumo deadlift, high pull, is adding the high pull in, which is what most people know as an upright row. So if I'm holding onto my object in this hang position, AKA, the end of the sumo deadlift position, my goal is simply to let my elbows come up and keep pulling them up until I can get my hands at collarbone level. Come back down, come back up. 
So we can do the strict at first. Take note here if I give you a different view, how close the bag is to my torso. Cool. So that's what we're looking for. Hopefully you tried a couple. It really does help to think in terms of the bigger muscle groups here. So I start with a shrug and then I pull the shoulder up, which forces my arm to bend. And then I really try to engage the arm a little bit more. But if I'm only doing a bicep curl with a bent wrist, you also might not have a good time uh, with today's workout. And that's a pattern that's actually not great. If you're not using the big muscles first, we want you to use everything in the system. So the goal is bring it up as high as you can with high elbows, let it sit down. And so let's put it together. Sumo deadlift, high pull. I'm gonna start in that sumo position like I did a second ago. Bag starts on the ground. I'm gonna lock my legs out. Here is a sumo deadlift as shown, but imagine this is a slow-mo rep. Once my hips open, then I add that shrug and I'll let the elbows fly up. Come back down to the ground. Here I get to really emphasize, am I locking my joints out low on the lower half before I engage any of the upper half of the body? And that's something for you to figure out. So I'll do a couple more from profile before I switch up the piece of equipment that I'm using. If you aren't already on it, Trader Joe's plantain chips. Fantastic. All right. Next up, backpack. So I can grab my GORUCK GR1, uh, my backpack right here, and it's got a top handle. Same idea that we had earlier, because I have it in this upright position when I do my sumo deadlift, I'm on the ground already and I barely bent my legs, right? So maybe I just uh, change my position. I can drop it on the side. I'll close my laptop sleeve. I can grab the uh, shoulder pads and kind of put them on top of each other. And now I can get no more advantageous position. Yeah, that was more advantageous, but that's advantageous in terms of work being done. Um, it's, it's a shorter distance. Our goal is to work you and your body a little bit more. So let's demand a little bit more reach in the knees and the hips by choosing a lower object. So from here, it's the same idea. Here's my sumo deadlift. I'll change direction again. Sumo deadlift. High pull. Elbows and sh shoulders and then elbows go high. Rotate. Now, this side of the bag is smooth. This is not. I have a little pouch there. So I have to keep that in mind if I were to use this particular object. So when I put it together, one plus two, one, two, one, two, one, two. From the side, one, two, one, two, one, two. I let it dictate coming back down. The weight will tell me on its own where it needs to go. So we have a different style of backpack. Same look, same idea. I can drop it on its side, grab the handles. and all that good stuff. Bumper plate, same idea. I can touch the ground fairly easy because this is pretty high. I got a nice little lip here, but it is still a grip challenge because I have to use a pinch grip rather than a crushing grip. Those are the differences there. You're used to a crushing grip if you use barbells, kettlebells, dumbbells. It's a pinch grip with a plate. I should note, if you need a quiet neighbor option, like I just beat on the ground a couple times. Fortunately, it's still our living quarters downstairs, but I could imagine if you have neighbors below you, 
beating into the ground is a nice way to make bad with your neighbors. So what's the goal there? If I go back to the bag, I will, just so you can see it clearly, my goal is to float it. I want to get close to, I want to flirt with getting close to the ground, but I actually never touch it. And you can challenge it that way. I'm going to eat those plantain chips after. Okay, we only have a couple more objects left. Now, I said this earlier. I think the band is probably one of the harder pieces of equipment uh, you can utilize in a lot of these kind of workouts. Why? Well, tension. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, lifting up 10 pounds up to here is not so bad. Lifting 135 would definitely be uh, really difficult. Check this out. So if I set this up, I just grab on one end of the band. I let it droop down and I grab both bands, both ends of the band in one hand and try to divide it into two pieces. Now I get two teardrops. I'm going to step into either of those teardrops. So I'm going to put them on my arches right there. And now I'm going to move my feet out into that sumo position. Remember, the wider you go, the more your toes will turn out. Make sure the band is secure. We don't want you getting hurt here. So when I'm just holding on to both bands, I can already feel that tension. This is making me work a little bit more. Sometimes people can feel like they have better balance um, when they've got weight because you can figure out how to put it over your center of mass and find that balance. Here, I've got actual live tension still pulling on this band even when I'm just standing there. So I get into my sumo deadlift start position, sumo deadlift end position. Now I'm going to go into the high pull, shrug elbows, and here's the crappy part. It doesn't float here. The kettlebell, the bags, they all float. They get that moment of restlessness. Here, I've, this is the hardest part of tension probably because the band is stretched the furthest. Then I reset and I reset. One, two, one, two. One, two, two, one. One, two, two, one. Legs, arms, arms, legs. And I say arms, but I really mean shoulders. All right, finally, the kettlebell. From here, it's exactly as we talked about momentarily, momentarily, a second ago, right? A moment ago, I'm standing wide. Sumo deadlift requires me to start this on the ground, but it's pretty low, right? Again, quiet neighbor option, just float it. You don't have to touch the ground. So from here, I'm gonna lock my legs, tuck my butt, Shrug up as hard and as, as fast as I can. I rotate. So there you go. There's the sumo deadlift today. I'm going to have a quick sip of a mocha, iced mocha. All right, because I definitely need caffeine and a little bit of sugar today. Happy Thursday, by the way. If you didn't know, if time is a blur right now, it is Thursday, it is the end. We're getting close to the end of the normal week. All right, next up, sumo deadlift, I'm sorry. We just did that. Goblet squat. The caffeine hasn't kicked in yet. So if I go backwards, pretty simple. I'm going to show you how I particularly challenge people when it comes to the kettlebell here. My personal standard for the goblet squat means that if the kettlebell sits and looks upright like this, it needs to sit and look upright like this in the rack position. What I'm going to do is slip my hands from the top part of the handle to the sides or the horns. And this is where I like people to do goblet squats because it really forces me to be active about either pushing my hands together or pulling my hands apart, right? I think the issue is when people go the other way and they flip the bell inverted and let kind of uh, gravity just hold it into their palms, 
it works. It's a little less active as I would prefer for this particular thing. If you want to really just challenge yourself with weight and speed, I'd give you a barbell at this point. Or if we're talking in terms of speed, I'd rather give you kettlebell swings. So for anybody who's always wondered in our gym why I prefer one over the other, that's why. The other position that I'm talking about is this. I don't like this. Right? I think there are better, more challenging ways than this. And I feel like this is a cop out. Do your work like this and you'll definitely feel it a little bit more, more tension throughout the body. So remember the sumo deadlift high pull is a pull. My hips stay higher than my knees the entire time. For the squat, we want the hips to go, go below the knees. So I'm up in this goblet squat position. I have broken parallel. What does that mean? My hip crease is below the top of my knee before I get out of this and I stand back up. The other thing to note with the uh, goblet squat, if I'm using something like a kettlebell, the extra added challenges, don't let any other part of the bell touch your body. The only thing that touches the bell are your hands. Okay. Move back here. I've got my patriotic set of bells. If I go back to the band, how do you make this hard? Well, I'll show you. Again, this is what I think is the hardest. We're going to turn this into a banded zerker. What does that mean? Well, I'm in my shoulder width stance already, but I have to start low to get into this. Zerker squats, zerker deadlifts, all that other zerker carries just mean that you have the weight in the crook of the elbows. So, and I like to put my hands together here. Stand up, come down. This is uncomfortable. You could get a little towel, you can get a shirt, something like that to put on the crook of the elbow so they're not holding these direct, depending on the thickness and tension of your band. But uh, that's how you can make the band help you out with squats a little bit more. Still standing up to full extension each and every time. All right. And then if you've got a bag, you just hug it. This doesn't need to be complicated. I get to hug it in front of my chest. Squat, stand. Squat, stand. With a different kind of bag. This one's got some cool shape to it. So I've got a flat side, which would be against me right now, and a rounded side on that. So I can figure out a more comfortable way to kind of hold this. I can get my hands to cover each other, interlace my fingers, or keep them apart. It's really up to you. Hold the weight in front of your chest. And that could literally be anything. I could use a book. I could use a file box. Here, one of my favorite books. The Food Lab by Kim G. Lopez Alt. Or, yeah. 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 You can make it harder, push it out in front of you, or even overhead. Just kidding, I wouldn't do that. You could sumo deadlift high pull with the book. But remember, we're going every minute on the minute with 10 mountain climbers. So hopefully I've stalled enough and you've already got yourself set up here. If not, we're gonna start in about a minute because that's how long it's probably gonna take me to set up this timer which will go on the bed. Woo! We're going 10 minutes. We're going to start and every minute on the minute. So this workout starts with 10 mountain climbers. Workout ends with 10 mountain climbers. We'll call it good. I'd ask you to keep track. I, I can't right now simply because I don't have a pen and paper or my whiteboard nearby. So I'm not going to do that, but I am. Let's do this. I will set this up where everybody can potentially see it. There, does that help with glare? P.S. By the way, thank you for tuning in. We have Shoot the Shit Thursdays happening on Instagram Live and Facebook Live at 6.30 p.m. today. 
Uh, so maybe if you're joining us for the workout, get your workout done, go eat. And then grab a drink and cool down. I'm probably, I mean, we'll see if we have, I have, I have a drink today. It's been a while, but I don't really care to drink. But I'll drink on camera for people if they like seeing the uh, drunk meat because it only takes a drink. Anyways, 10 minutes on the clock. AMRAP in 10 minutes. 10 sumo deadlift high pulls. 10 goblet squats. But every minute on the minute, we have to do some, um... actually, I'm going to put it that way. I'm going to change it. I'm sorry. Every one minute for 10 minutes. Yes, here we go. That's a better version of the clock. 10 mountain climbers in between, left and right, every time the right knee or the left knee touches. One, two, three, four. Then that's what counts, right? So you will you will be interrupted between the sumo deadlift pipe pulls and the goblet squats over and over. But that's what we're going to look for. I'm going to crack this window before we begin because I just realized how sweaty I am. Hopefully the neighbors aren't getting crazy or my daughter runs out into the, the backyard and starts screaming. Can't play music because of copyright law. We've been caught too many times and the bots are really good. 10 seconds. <sighs> Two, one, begin. Ooh, I already lied and I didn't do the mountain climbers. Okay. I bought in. Hopefully you remembered. Halfway there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds. Mountain climbers. <sighs> Don't hit yourself in the chin, because I definitely just surprised myself a little bit.
10 seconds. <sighs> Two minutes left. One minute left. Oh, <sighs> 
last time with the mountain climbers. Let's get it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, high five. And there you have it. Hammer up in 10 minutes. 10 sumo dental pipe holes. 10 goblet squats with every minute on the minute. Starting and ending the workout with 10 mountain climbers. 10 left and right mountain climbers. Both legs count as one. Hey, look at that. Nice job. I try to catch my breath. I know this is always awkward in live streaming. I can tell you it's awkward as fuck. But catch my breath for a moment so I can tell you. Join us later tonight on Facebook Live, on Instagram Live. Shoot the shit there is a, if you're not already aware, it's a Q&A with me. I answer a ton of questions that the gym has received, the coaches have received, and I've received personally over the week. Talk about training life. Holding up in, a, in these strange, strange times and the like. So feel free to join us then. Otherwise, please check out our blog, foundationcrossfit.com slash blog for all the latest news, workouts, and updates about what's going on here. That will be a point of contention during today's Q&A. Uh, I feel like there's something else that was important. Memorial Day is coming up. We got Murph. Potentially be, 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 be very smart. I can't trust that enough. You're not used to the volume right now and asking for 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats with a mile run before and after. Could lead to some serious injury. So I'm caught nothing hard right now. Keep that in mind. Ooh, I'm sweating. I'm going to shower, drink some water, shower, eat some dinner, and then I'll join you at 630 Otherwise, thank you for joining us today. And we shall see you later. Whew.